Greetings here from Pinepot. Welcome to my latest episode of Climbing the Curve. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Harasser. Now the Harasser is a light buggy vehicle. It costs 300 vehicle resources to pull and similar to the Flash and Sundra, it can be pulled from any base. It has three seats, the driver's seat, the gunner's seat and the rumble seat at the back which can carry maxes and has a special ability. Now before the recent balance pass on Harassers, they used to be incredibly ubiquitous in Planetside 2. They were incredibly powerful and pretty much the most feared vehicle in the game. Post the balance patch, they are considerably weaker, to such an extent that some players even question what their role is any longer. So what can I do is take a look at how best to use this new weakened Harasser and give a few ideas of how a newer player can get some mileage out of them. The Harasser is a fast, highly manoeuvrable buggy and it is this mobility which is its primary defence mechanism. As you can see from the numbers above, the shots to kill a harasser from rockets or a tank are very low. This translates to an incredibly low time to kill. It is also very susceptible to small arms fire from infantry. Therefore, the principal defence of the harasser is the inability of the other side to land its shots. And this has a number of implications for both the offensive and defensive options of the harasser. Now from a defensive perspective, the two options on the table are these. Firstly, to use the speed and mobility of the harasser to avoid enemy incoming fire. To do this effectively, you have to work on the basis of never staying still. The window of opportunity to attack the enemy is small, but then again, their window of opportunity to counter is also small. Now the second option is to use the mobility of the harasser to position yourself somewhere where it is difficult for the enemy to retaliate. In this way you can bring the offensive capacity of your top gun to bear, with less concern about the other side's ability to retaliate. However, one thing you can't do with the harasser any longer is hang around in the middle of the battlefield. The time to kill you is simply too low. By the time you realise you're receiving damage, it's pretty much all over. And it is this feature, above all else I think, which is giving the most trouble to players who are used to the old harasser. It was a lot more durable and therefore highly aggressive tactics used previously are no longer viable. Now the defensive options available to the harasser have implications as well on its offensive options. An attack strategy involving high maneuverability and a small window of opportunity lends itself to weapons which have very high alpha. Quick in, quick out, heavy damage weapons. What it does not lend itself to is a weapon which is designed for lower damage, sustained over a period of time such as the Basilisk. Also, strategies which involve getting to more inaccessible places using the maneuverability of the harasser tend to have those places a little further away from the battle. Therefore, in these distances you want a weapon which is good at sniping. Less alpha is required as you should be able to stay in the same location a little longer but certainly accuracy from longer distances. What you don't really want is a weapon whose accuracy falls off dramatically at longer distances, such as the Basilisk. Now the punchline is that the default weapon on the top of the Rasa is the Basilisk. So, does this mean to get the most out of the Rasa, you're effectively obliged to change your weapon on top? Well the answer is yes and no. If you want to be using the Rasa as a weapons platform, where the primary damage is being done by your top gun, then I think the answer is inevitably yes. You either have to switch it out for a very high damage, low range option such as the Fury or the Vulcan, or a weapon which is more suitable from sniping at a distance such as the Halberd or the Enforcer. But there is another option on the table, and that is to start treating the Harasser as an infantry platform which just happens to be carrying a gun. This works wonderfully if you have three infantry inside the vehicle, but even works very effectively if you just have yourself. The harasser can be used as a platform to give mobility to infantry on the battlefield. In the same way jetpacks give light assaults mobility within buildings and complexes. And then when you find a decent target, just jump out and attack them on foot. You can even have a gunner provide assistance from a top gun, for which the basilisk is just fine as it is effective against all targets. In this way you can effectively use the crew of the harasser as an assassination crew hunting down enemy infantry pockets around the battlefield and wiping them out. This can be particularly potent as frequently they don't expect you to jump out and you can end up being a nasty surprise. Now whether or not as a new player you can fully utilise this is questionable. However, as you can see from the footage, it doesn't work so badly doing it solo. 
In this way, it can genuinely fulfill its namesake, the harasser. Now one feature I haven't touched on is the ability to repair the harasser from the back seat. This used to be incredibly powerful but was heavily nerfed. As you can see from the footage, the rate of repair is much slower. Therefore I rarely use this now other than to top up the vehicle. However, it is still worth knowing. Now the final thing to consider are initial upgrades. There are a decent number of options, but I would go for IR smoke in the utility slot. In the defense slot, composite armor used to be the absolute standard. Now as you can tell from the numbers above, it is no great shakes. Therefore, if you're on a very strict budget, I would get Mineguard. If you have a few more certs to invest, I'd go for Proximity Radar Rank 1. This will allow you to hunt down nearby infantry with much more ease, as surprise and speed are your greatest weapons. So, in conclusion, the Harasser is clearly a shadow of its former self, but it still has a niche role and plenty of potential. Given you really need to change up the gun to realise this potential, it's a bit of a stretch whether or not newer players can get that much out of the vehicle. However, one thing I would say in its favour is it's still a hell of a lot of fun to drive. So you may not do a lot of damage, but the journey should be a hell of a lot of fun. So my advice? Give it a whirl! Now my next episode, I'm going to be taking a look at upgrading the Infiltrator. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video or found it interesting, please feel free to thumbs up, thumbs down, subscribe or comment as appropriate. In the meantime, happy hunting and pint pot out. Have a good one.